just mm. don't go for a hike, right? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Just take the mental win that you own your body physically and you know your body well enough to serve your body instead of thinking that your body is meant to serve you. Like it is, right? But it's a two-way street. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. We have an incredible guest here today that has a really amazing story, and it's about a topic that we have not talked about yet on this podcast, probably because I know nothing about this topic. Uh, and we have a guest here who specializes in helping women use their cycles to optimize their health. So her name is Andy Bucko, and before she's a personal trainer, Pilates trainer, but more importantly, she's helped women find balance through protein pacing, food pairings, hormone, hormone healthy foods, and mindful movement, as well as many other great methods and strategies that we'll be discussing here today. Uh, really quick, before we jump into it, if you are a repeat listener, we do ask if you could please rate, subscribe, uh, review, share the podcast with people if you got value out of it. And with that, let's jump straight into it. Uh, Andy, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So why don't we start with a uh, a brief background? I know you've had many, many health challenges. Um, and we and I know a lot of the women will want to hear about that and hear about, you know, how you solve those. But let's start with kind of a, a short background on on some of the challenges and issues you faced. Sure. Um so typical story and uh, high school struggled with food um, and my relationship with food. And then I also started having uh, symptoms of multiple sclerosis without knowing that's what they were. Um, so when I overheat, I lose sensation in my arms and my legs and I kind of like, I seem like I pass out, but I'm still conscious. Um, but then I cool down and I'm fine. So it looks really dramatic. Um, that's actually how they used to test for multiple sclerosis before like MRIs and stuff. They would just like heat people up and see if they would pass out. Wow. Um, yeah. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, so then uh, went to college and spiraled with birth control and just not living at home and all the crazy things and ended up over 200 pounds at one point. Um, and then my junior is when I, Moved to Australia for six months, eight, six months. Yeah. Um, played volleyball there again and just found fitness and just started working out again. I was feeling good. Um, and by that point, I moved back to America and yeah, graduated from college, went to grad school. And that's when I started my education journey. So I got my master's in education. I have my undergrad in chemical biology. So I went to grad school intending to be a science teacher. Um, ended up doing that for a while. And right as I moved out of grad school into uh, the workforce, I guess, um, uh, that summer, as I was looking for teaching jobs, I ended up getting diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, I lost the vision in my left eye wow. uh, over the course of like two weeks. Um, so I ended up going to the ER and the doctor told me it was an optic migraine. And by the time the doctor was leaving the room, my partner was looking at his phone and he's like, no, that's, it's not that like, we already knew she was wrong. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that was a journey because of health insurance and madness. Um, but then I ended up getting diagnosed spring of 2016 officially because I had new lesions, um, ended up getting put on disease modifying drugs, uh, Copaxone. Um, and during all this time, it was my first year teaching, second year teaching, super stressful. Uh, I worked at a title one school, so majority minority, just like the most challenging, but awesome kids I could have asked for. I love my students. Uh, I miss them a lot. Um, like I, I, that was, that was hard, but we'll get to that part. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my first MS medications ended up not working. Um, so they switched me onto my second ones, which was right around the same time that I ended up getting diagnosed with endometriosis and had my first surgery for that. Um, was put on medication during this, like before that was trying birth controls, then in between my first surgery 
at, right after my first surgery, they put me on Orlissa, which essentially puts you into menopause. So I was in menopause for two years. So that was fun. Like 29 years old, having hot flashes. Um, but <laughs> then we, uh, man. So then COVID yeah, I mean, hit. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, we, cause I'm re I also, you know, some of the stuff you sent me before about how you had weight gain, depression, acne, surgeries. Um, and, and then I do definitely, I, I know people want to want to hear about like, how did you kind of like, how did you finally get through this? And, and it, you know, was it the doctors or medication or was it the opposite of that? You know? Right. So then finally I ended up getting my second surgery after uh, COVID hit and I lost my teaching job because I couldn't, I was immunocompromised and all the things, mm -hmm. uh, still tried to get me on birth control, still wasn't helping. I was still dealing with acne. I was still dealing with all the weight gain. Like I couldn't stay consistent. And with how competitive I am, like, I love working out. I love doing the things I love going hard. Um, did CrossFit for a long time. I played collegiate volleyball, like I wanted to do it, but I just meant like physically could not bring myself to, mm. um, finally was like, I'm done with all of this, get all the hormones off of me. Like, mm. <laughs> so, um, and then it took about six months from there to really hone in on my nutrition and my movement and listen to my body, um, and let my body heal and realizing that my body is a lot smarter than we give it credit. Um, and that modern medicine isn't as smart as we give it credit, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. ironically. Um, and just letting my body do its thing and listening to it um, and supporting it naturally. So like I even just got approved to get off of my multiple sclerosis medicine. Um, so I won't have to deal with that. I won't be immunocompromised anymore. Uh, so it's there's just so much benefit to letting your body do its thing. And we mm. just, again, like we don't give our bodies the opportunity to even try a lot of times. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's an, that's a, an amazing um, story. And looking at you now, you look very healthy. You look, you know, you look energy, you know, full of energy and health and um, it's, it's really great. Um, and so I know that, you know, this one, this, this episode is probably going to be more for the ladies. Um, and, uh, you know, one, your specialty is in helping women use their cycles to optimize their health. And it's not something, you know, I've heard talked about on many podcasts or many places, but it's something many women struggle with. I mean, you know, and, and, you know, it's like, you know, my wife sometimes struggles with it. And, you know, I think to myself, like, wow, like, you know, if you're spending, you know, what, 20 or 25% of your life in, in a certain, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better word, period, um, <laughs> you know, uh, no pun intended, um, then, you know, managing that and learning how to, you know, be the best you can be during that time is going to be something critically important, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I don't think we start that education soon enough. Mm. Um, like, you have your first period, you should be talking about this kind of stuff. Because um, mm. even like your metabolism changes throughout your cycle. Your, the way you, uh, like your thirst signals change throughout your cycle because your salt retention changes throughout your cycle. And we don't give these things enough credit and we just expect women to perform on the same programming that we give men. And it's just, it's just not it. Right. Cause like mm -hmm. Stacey Sims is like one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, and her big thing is women are not small men. Like we're just, we're just not like, mm. and I, so much research, medical research, athletic research, all of it is based on men. Um, or a lot of times they only consider women in the first half of their cycle because they're lower in hormones. They don't have progesterone and estrogen during that time. So um, they won't consider women during the second half of their cycle. So we don't even know like how a lot of these things affect women throughout their entire cycles because we are only trying to take them during like we're trying to, they try and take that variable out of the research, right? So they only try and compare women and men during women's lower like hormone cycle. So mm, interesting. Yeah. So, so what, um, so what are some of the things that women should be aware of and, and, you know, some of the differences um, and what they can do to, you know, better, 
feel better during during those times? One of the biggest things is just making sure you're getting enough protein and pacing it throughout your day because you can mm. only digest so much protein in one sitting. Your body mm -hmm. just can't absorb that many amino acids. Like there's a limit. Um, and making sure that we're spreading that throughout the day. And then it's a quality protein, right? Like that the loosing count on stuff really, really matters for women. Um, mm. And that's what triggers your muscle synthesis. Like that's the big one. Um, mm -hmm. And I know a lot of women try and go, I mean, a lot of people just try and go plant proteins these days, but the amino acid composition isn't exactly what you need it to be in order to get the most benefit out of your food, because there's just so many foods that do need to be paired up. Like vitamin D and K, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like those mm -hmm. are the types of things that you need to look out for because amino acids work the same way. Um, mm -hmm. Especially when you're trying to build muscle to lean out or whatever your goal is, um, even to uh, minimize your, your symptoms of PMS, right? Like if you're able to boost your amino acids and optimize the absorption, you can actually lower those symptoms because your body has all everything that it needs and you're not feeling depleted because your progesterone is really catabolic. It breaks down, right? It's trying to break down stuff so that you can make that uterine lining. That's its priority. That's your body's goal, right? It doesn't care about how you feel. It's just trying to get you pregnant, right? So that's the, <laughs> that's the main goal. So if we can really support our body and give the amino acid composition that you need, that's the biggest one. Interesting. So, so protein specifically, especially during this time, making sure you're getting uh, an adequate amount of protein. Do you have any sort of formula like, you know, one gram per body weight or 0.7 grams per body weight kind of a thing? I'm never mad at a gram per body weight. I'm never mad at that. Um, like mm -hmm. the, the more athletic you are, the more efficient you are at digesting protein. So you actually don't need as much. But mm -hmm. if you're trying to have change in body composition, you're definitely trying to go for that one, uh, one to one, one so. to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And so what about also, um, you'd mentioned, I think at one point, uh, kind of tracking, tracking cycles and like, you know, um, it, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what does that look like? What should most women be doing from that perspective? So every woman should devote the first minute of their day <laughs> to, to tracking. Um, I use three data points, uh, cervical height, cervical mucus, and basal temperature. Like you wake up, you take the thermometer uh, at least after three hours of sleep <clears throat> uh, to get a true resting temperature. Um, you'll know that you ovulated because your temperature drops the day that, that after you ovulate, progesterone causes a drop in body temperature. Um, and from there, you can predict when your cycle is going to start. Um, you can also see when you're going to be high in hormones, which is you know, five to seven days after you ovulate, that's usually when you're going to feel, start feeling your PMS symptoms. Um, and then the day before your period, all of these hormones start to drop pretty hard. And that's when like the headaches can start and the GI symptoms and things like that. Mm. Um, so just planning around that and also knowing, because some women ovulate and they take 10 days to go from ovulation to their period. Some women take 14. Um, some women ovulate sooner in their cycle. And like the, I, like the textbook is 28 days, but again, like that's, that's average, right? It can mm -hmm. be 21 mm -hmm. to 28 days, uh, sorry, 35 days is considered normal. Um, mm -hmm. Granted normal and optimal are mm -hmm. you know, a debate, but um, as long as it's consistent and you feel good during your cycle and though that range is fine. Mm -hmm. What about, you mentioned progesterone a couple of times and I actually, I can't remember if some, uh, someone once told my wife or someone I've heard progesterone kind of being talked about as a supplement. I was curious just on this topic, <laughs> do you recommend at all? Or do you personally look for, you know, supplementing with something like I've heard of pregnenolone, I've heard of progesterone, or, you know, any other kind of supplements specifically during this time period? Um, so I actually talked about supplementing when I was working with my functional medicine doctor on that. Um, but I tried Vitex instead, which is an herb. It's a natural supplement. Um, always check with your doctor, right? But uh, sure. it's that that's one that you take after you ovulate. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's flow 
I keep seeing ads for them on my Instagram, <laughs> um, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that's one of the brands that takes advantage of Vitex. Um, Vitex is the ingredient and it's in, it's in a product called flow. That's been advertised. Correct. Heavily. Okay. Correct. I don't use flow. I just get regular Vitex, but you can sure whatever. Um, so that's a natural herb that anyone can just buy from Amazon or wherever. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then, uh, seed cycling is also great. Um, cause certain seeds can help promote estrogen versus progesterone. Um, and then like, just, so what is that? Explain that a little bit. Seed cycling. I'm not sure others or myself are familiar with seed cycling. Sure. Um, so during the first half of your cycle, you have a tablespoon. Oh man, you put me on the spot. Pumpkin and maybe people people could maybe research it for flax. the exact protocol. No, no, no. But, I got okay, it. You got I got it. it? Okay, it's pumpkin cool. and flax um, pumpkin for and the flax. first half of your cycle, and then okay. uh, sesame and sunflower for the second half of your cycle. Um, hmm. Because they help metabolize estrogen or progesterone, which then helps your body kick into making more of its own. Um, okay. That's the idea. Uh, so that that was helpful for me. Um, but again, you by tracking your temperature, you can see when you should actually do the switch from one batch of seeds to the other. And it's a tablespoon a day. Um, fresh ground is best. But, mm -hmm. it, and it's like, don't freak out if you have pumpkin seeds, you know, the day before your period, you're not going to mess anything up. Like, like it, it's yeah. more the consistency of having it every day throughout your cycle um, because food is medicine, right? Like that's mm -hmm. one of the ways we talk to our bodies, food, food, breath, and movement. That's what I try and tell my clients. Like if you're doing those three things, right, you're going to figure it out. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's seed cycling. In a Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah. What else, I guess, for, for some, for, for women that are struggling, maybe, you know, um, you know, during their period and they're, and they're struggling to like have energy or they're constantly getting headaches or kind of feeling like they're out of commission for the week. Um, we talked about making sure you're getting adequate protein and your preferences, uh, animal protein because of the leucine, um, amino acid leucine that's, uh, that has, is higher in animal protein, which, which is, well known and well studied for muscle growth and and overall you know mm -hmm. muscle building benefits. Um, we talked about seed cycling. Um, you talked about Vitex. A anything on? So you've never taken? Um, I'm just curious. Pregnenolone or progesterone or any other supplements either? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, no, nope. because um, once I started the Vitex, I had my cycle actually kicked in pretty well. Nice, interesting. So you know. So I the mean, timing I'm sure of the Vitex that, again, but... the, the timing on the Vitex, when should that exactly be started? After ovulation. And okay. then you stop the day that you start bleeding. Okay. So day one of your cycle is the day of your first full bleed. Okay. And okay. then that like normally women ovulate on day 14, sorry, day 10 to 14, somewhere in there. Okay. Anything else um, that's important um, to, the, to discuss on this topic? Movement, mm. movement is huge because so many women show up. Like I coached um, at a forty-five, which is like an Orange Theory type of thing, uh -huh. um, and it's all hit based. Even though there are strength days, it's still very hit based. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me, mm -hmm. and just the constant spiking of cortisol, and they come in working out fasted, especially the women. Like you know, and doing hit fasted i'm like oh my god <laughs> um, right. especially when you're dealing with cortisol issues you know like mm, you're mm. you're you're coming in busting butt your heart rate monitor told you you burned 800 calories or whatever for the last you know five workouts that you've done for however many weeks in a row and you can't lose a pound why yeah. is that right why is that um so working out less <laughs> is usually something that I have to work with my clients on. Um, yeah. So it's great. It's interesting there. So a couple of things there, like you said, you said movement and number one, there's also been a lot of talk recently, a lot of studies and a lot of talk recently of, you know, fasting for women is also different than fasting for men as well. And mm -hmm. that the time periods um, that women should be fasting for potentially, you know, especially if they're just doing the regular intermittent fasting, that's all the, all the rage right now. Um, should potentially be for a lower period of time. And especially, like you said, if they're going to go do HIIT training or some really intense hard workout, um, 
that that can really take a toll uh, on on the body. So so you're saying movement, but more lighter movements. I know you're also a Pilates uh, teacher as well. So mm -hmm. my wife takes Pilates a couple times a week. She loves it. It seems like it's a great workout, but not like so intense that you're like destroyed after, right? So right. Is, is that some of the things you would kind of recommend during that time or more just like stretching and walking and stuff like that? So the first two weeks of your cycle, like you're hormonally as masculine as you're going to be, let's say, right? So go do your hit, go crazy, have fun. Um, cause you're probably going to feel good doing it. Uh, so don't let your period make you feel like you can't perform cause you can, um, you may have cramps and things like that, but uh, like you overall, you, sh you should be able to do what you want to do while you're on your period. Then after ovulation, some women are hit or miss. Some women feel amazing when they ovulate. Some women feel like just, they, they feel like they fall flat when they ovulate. And then they have an uptick a few days later, e each woman's different. Um, during that week after ovulation, uh, going not as much hit, maybe going a little bit more steady state, um, working some more strength. You don't have to go crazy with the heart rate at that time. Um, and then the week five to seven days before your period, listen to your body. If you feel good, go for it. Um, but I like to use that week for just like technique and form. Cause if you can hone, excuse me, if you can hone in physically, even when you don't feel great, the next week, it's going to be the next week that you're going to feel good where you can now apply that technique work and have great lifts and, and like really like apply everything. And there's even studies that show women that, man, women that worked out three days, like every other day for the first two day, first two weeks of their cycle. And then only once a week during the second two weeks of their cycle compared to women who worked out every other day, just throughout the whole cycle. Um, so the number of workouts ended up being the same like it, I want to say it was like 20% more muscle growth on the group that concentrated their training during the first two weeks of their cycle. So it's like work harder, not smarter, you know, I mean, mm. you know it's smarter, not harder versus, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 like, you, you, like, that's the thing. Like we, we have this image of like what a good workout is mm -hmm. and it's, you know, I'm dying on the floor and I should feel like that every single workout. And that's just not the case. Like, are your body's not meant to do that. Um, I mean, you can do that, but if, if your goal is to, you know, look a specific way, you're not going to, if mm -hmm. your goal is to feel a specific way, you're not going to, um, mm -hmm. I can't speak to athletic performance on that level. Like if someone wants to go to CrossFit games, I'm sure they have to push through different things and consider different aspects. Right. But I'm, I'm talking to the average woman who just, you know, wants to be athletic and wants to feel good. Um, yeah. but and most of the women, the right most of the women listening are over the age of 30. They're not going to be a professional athlete. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they might be in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, right? Um, more just looking for overall health and longevity. And, you know, even myself, right? I'm only I mean, you know, I'm only 41. But even now, like, I can't, I can't lift heavy weights six days a week, like I used to like, I just feel beat up and destroyed and I don't mm -hmm. feel good. And my inflammation markers will, will be higher. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really important to kind of have some balance and, um, but interesting how, how timing it around uh, the cycle like that is, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's just so, there's so much power in tracking that too. Right. Mm -hmm. So like when I have women track their cycles, I'm also having them track what their workouts were, how they felt during their workouts. So you can see a direct correlation of like, Hey, like you're ovulating and you feel like crap like that. The past three cycles, just don't work out that day. Just mm. don't go for a hike. Right. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Just take the mental win that you own your body physically and you know your body well enough to serve your body instead of thinking that your body is meant to serve you. Like it is right. But it's a two way street. And if your body is trying to tell you these signals, it is being consistent. It is showing up crappily the day you ovulate every single time you have like just uh it, it it just frustrates me when women don't listen to their bodies and I think it's just because I I've had my body taken away from me right like I've I've mm. I've been in a place where I couldn't see like I couldn't move my like I couldn't move right like I just being on the couch with my dog for two weeks like 
I've been there, you know, like, mm -hmm. I, and I, it just, it drives me nuts when people just like, they have this, this gift of movement and all of this, this knowledge at their fingertips that like they could do the things. Um, so I just, I really want to empower women to use that knowledge because we haven't been taught it. We haven't been taught it. Like it so much is different for women than for men, but with fitness, we're still just like this one size fits all when that research was done on men. It's just, that's, that's the truth of it. The research was done on men. So it's really eye opening. I, I really never thought about that, but it's so true. Um, I'm really, really glad we're having this conversation about that. You, you also talk about hormone healthy foods and food pairings. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so number one thing is gut health. Mm -hmm. A healthy gut flora is going to carry you through. Um, I will always try and get my clients to add more fermented foods into their diets. Um, huge into fermented foods. Go, go crazy. Uh, what are some of your favorites? Fermented foods? Uh, I, I make my own sourdough. Um, mm. So that's, that's always a fun one, but that's, that's a loaded one because I know like the quality of your flour and like all of the things matter. So like, right. I go to my farmer's market and get stone ground flour that, you know, like there's, there's, there's a way to do flour, like uh, gluten and all those things, but you have yeah, to consider, probably, probably like, not going to the supermarket and buying a sour sourdough bread is probably not the best solution. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've had my, I've had my starter for like three years now. Like it's like another pet, like I got the dogs and the starter and the divorce. Like it was, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I haven't heard of, you know, I've actually haven't heard of sourdough when people talk about fermented foods. I mean, I hear like kimchi and sauerkraut are the two that I commonly hear, right? Because people always get stuck on the fact that they think it has to be live and it doesn't the, the, hmm. like the, the, fer the fermented part isn't necessarily like because keep in mind, you eat kimchi, it goes through your stomach acid. Most like not a lot of those bacteria survive. They're just like, let's be real here. Right. So uh -huh. like, that's very acidic. Those, those guys are going through it when they're trying to survive some will. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, for sourdough, for example, even though it's baked, right. That's essentially pasteurized, right? Like the, right. It's been in the oven for an hour at however many degrees, the, the carcasses of the yeast and bacteria serve as different food sources for different gut flora in your gut, which then can give you the benefits. So like, like the different food sources, the same way we need different food sources, your gut flora can need different food sources. So um, things like uh, sourdough, even though it's baked, the, the carcasses of the microbes that fermented that food. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole chain. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I also love just fermented cabbage. That's always an easy one because uh -huh, it's okay. so easy to make. Like you literally slice cabbage and it's two cups of water and one tablespoon of salt and you let it sit there. Like that's it. It's so easy. So, um, oh, yeah, interesting. It, so I hadn't heard about that. So you just buy a regular cabbage from the supermarket and, mm -hmm. and what do you do? Sorry. I'm, you, I'm, I don't know much about this. <laughs> you, you slice it up. And mm -hmm. then you stick it in a jar with, with a salt brine. And if you want, you can add garlic or peppercorn if you're feeling fancy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you just let it sit on your counter for a couple days. I mean, make sure everything's clean because food safety, all the things. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, like you, you go to the supermarket and you try and get like health foods, right? Fermented foods are always in the health food section and they're always overpriced. Mm -hmm. when like things like that i'm like no there's no excuse you can buy a head of cabbage for a couple dollars and make yourself like mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> and this is just uh, in general this is kind of just in general all month long not not really like during a specific time that people should right. be eating just fermented foods in general yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it takes it takes a couple weeks but it, like within two weeks you can change your gut flora you know like it doesn't take too long but you have to be consistent about it and variety is always key, right? Like variety is always best. Um, you know, mixing it up with like quality cheeses are always good. Um, like your goat cheeses, things like that. I love my yogurt and kefir and kombucha. Um, mm. Like just, again, it's all about the variety of it. 
Um, what kind of like if you were shopping for a cheese, what would be your, I didn't, I didn't think of cheese as being a fermented uh, mm -hmm. thing either, really. So like an organic, an organic uh, kind of raw goat cheese kind of a thing, something like mm -hmm. that you would look for. Nice. I, I love me some feta as well. Feta yeah, is always feta. good. Love yeah. feta. Um, the, the hard cheeses, like the parms are good too. Um, mm. yeah, like obviously like the super processed, like, yeah none of those um because right. that's not those aren't really truly fermented if i'm not mistaken um yeah, the parmesan you get at the pizza store probably uh isn't isn't fermented yeah. right and <laughs> honestly like try different cheeses like if you have a place that you can go like go to a cheese shop and like try different ones because even the fact that like they're made in different parts of the world you're going to be exposed to different types of bacteria and fungi because they they were made in different shops like mm. sourdough tastes different from different bakeries because of the different starter that from the right so like right, even right. like it's just another cheat to expose yourself to more different you know types of microbes nice nice yeah. Um, any other hormone healthy foods or food pairings that, uh, you like? Um, the big one is just making sure you're pairing, uh, your, um, your protein, carb, and fat so that you can digest as efficiently as possible. Um, so you're saying protein, carbs, and fat, um, it, it, you know, kind of in each meal have at mm -hmm. least some of, some of each of those. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, cause okay. even, even if you really need your dessert, cause I know there are people that need their dessert occasionally, like I get that. Right. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but at least if you eat some protein and some fiber with that meal, you're slowing down the absorption of that sugar. You're not causing as big of an insulin spike, right? You're, you're not, and you're also probably not going to eat as much of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. like your body can cue you like hey i'm actually full and satisfied and i also right. am a huge per like if you really need that you better sit down and be with that food and enjoy it like there's <laughs> yeah. there's none of this like well i just sat down and like mindlessly ate the whole piece like the whole cake no no you cut yourself a slice and you sit down and you have that sli slice of cake like and you enjoy the crap out of it um because <laughs> yep. because then most of the time you're going to be satiated you know and like mm -hmm. that's the mind body connection that we're also trying to coach through that like intuitive eating can give you that's why you won't overeat if you actually sit down and you're present with your food and you make that connection with your food that's part of the reason why i like making sourdough so much because it's just i have a connection with my food my grandmother used to bake sourdough all the time like it, it's just something that like can I don't know it just it brings me closer to what I'm doing um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think just Americans in general have gotten really far away from that um mm -hmm. like my parents are from Poland my mom used to like grow her own cucumbers and make her own pickles like that was that's how I grew up um so I I know I'm spoiled in that way but that if we can come back to that I think this diet culture can really like be in the rear view mirror right like if mm -hmm. we can actually get our food right because food quality is like so overlooked these days so overlooked right. we're like so into calories and macros and all the things and right but is it sprayed with pesticides like because right. it right like so it, it, there's just we're not looking at the whole picture when we're talking like the fitness part of nutrition yeah it's really one of my pet peeves um because especially when you see you know and you see a lot of guys who are like really you know really big really ripped and all of a sudden they start talking about eh, it's just all about calories and you know you can eat dessert every night as long as it hits your calorie count mm -hmm. and you know all this kind of stuff and it just kind of drives me a little crazy because it's like okay yes that may be true if we're only talking about body composition if you run enough miles or work out enough hours in the gym maybe you can eat sugar and your body will still look good. But, you know, if we're talking about inflammation and, and, you know, um, you know, your longevity. glucose and yeah, longevity, right. It's so I think we need to separate like body composition and longevity, right. Mm -hmm. It's like almost two separate things in health that often, and people are kind of like talking past each other, like calories in calories out is all that matters. No, it doesn't matter. Like, and it's like, well, you're talking about longevity and you're just talking about body composition, you know, right. So, and I had yeah. I had a similar conversation with when I was a trainer with someone about like how do you get the best athletes right and and to me like it, if you're looking at an overall healthy person if that's your definition of an athlete because that's 
to me, anyone can be an athlete. You don't need to get paid. Right. So like mm -hmm. you're, you're healthy, you can move, you have, you know, all the planes, you're coordinated, you're embodied. Right. To me, that's an athlete. The best way to get that to me is to have a kid do all the damn sports, like have them try everything, like mm -hmm. whatever they want to try, let them try it. And I was countered with, well, no, no. Like if you want the best athlete, like they need to specialize, like from the time they're little. And like, if you want a good football player, they need to only be playing football for all the things. And I'm like, you're going to end up with so many injuries. That is not a healthy person to me. Right. Like that, mm. like that's, that's, what's going to happen. Right. And we're, it, it's a different, we're, we're, the goal is different, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that intersection isn't, isn't quite there yet. When Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts just in general, um, especially, you know, um, maybe relating to, to women and their cycles or, or maybe just in general, your um, kind of in terms of food, because you're, you're saying it's so important, right? Um, we all know it's so important. Um, you, what are some of your kind of like mindsets around it? Or what are, what are things that you just like, don't eat, you know, or, or always do eat, like, you know, you mentioned protein, carbs, and fat. Some people are all about, you know, higher fat, lower carb, some people are, you know, um, you know, different, different uh, thought, thought processes about it. So I was curious to hear what your thinking is around foods and health. Um, so I still very much coach, like during different times of your cycle, you're going to want different things. Mm -hmm. um, so honor that. My one rule is like, make sure you're getting your protein. You need to be spacing out your protein. Um mm -hmm. Cause if you're spacing out your protein and eating your vegetables, the rest should fall into place. And then you right. end up craving the right foods anyway, cause you're just going to know what your body wants and you're going to feel good by eating those things. And then you're going to want to do like it's a positive feedback loop. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, at least that's what we're trying to get to. Uh, but when it really like making sure that you're, you're, mindful of where you are in your cycle and also hydration because hydration is a big one that we overlook um when you're mm -hmm. higher in progesterone you're not as good at holding on to salt um so not drinking to thirst during the second half of your cycle uh like making sure you're actually staying hydrated i know i am guilty of this i am just not as thirsty during the second half of my cycle um and that can make a huge difference when it comes to cramping and acne and you know, all of those symptoms just because you're not detoxing as well, right? Like you're just not supporting your body as well. Um, mm -hmm. So making sure that you're hydrating, but not just with water, with all the, like the electrolytes that you need, right? Um, so are you, are you adding an electrolyte powder specifically during, during that time as well? So I usually just do a little bit of sea salt and that's, yeah, yeah like that's honestly all you need. Um, sometimes I get, I, I have a nice grocery store by me. Um, mm -hmm. so like they have all the different sea salts and I'm like, Ooh, let's try different ones this month. Like, you know, just have fun with it. Um, yeah. cause they do have different flavors, like, and it's not, it's not big, but with a little bit of, of lemon juice or something like that, just making sure that you're, um, like, again, just staying hydrated during the second half of your cycle. Um, uh, what else can I think of? Yeah, I love the salt thing, by the way, every every health person I talk to these days is like, yeah, add salt as long as it's a good quality, you know, sea salt. Um, and it's just great. You know, I, I uh, salt tastes great. And for so many years, we've been told how it's so bad for you, you know, and now it's like, no, actually, if you're, you know, eating, you know, I guess I guess I think the old sodium thing came from like people who are eating tons of just like processed bread and pasta with high sodium and things right. of that nature um but if you're not eating that stuff then you know you need um, you need to put salt in your food yeah because exactly. it tastes good and that's right. the thing like we we're so mad at the fact that this tastes good <laughs> like it's okay that food tastes good it's supposed to right like right. like food is meant to be a pleasure in life so if like salt your steak have fun like go go crazy right like and if you're balanced the thing is mm -hmm. like your body won't let you oversalt your food. You're you're mm -hmm. going to feel like that's too salty. I won't want it. And like, but we also have this weird mindset with food where we can't either waste food, which is a pet peeve of mine. Don't get me wrong. But like we get into these weird sets where like this food's in front of me. So I have to eat it versus like, what does my body actually want? So that's another thing that I work with my clients a lot on. Like, just because it's in front of you does not mean that it serves you. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, right? that's definitely a tough one. I mean, like, mm-hmm. cause you know, looking at my mom, for example, who grew up, you know, many years ago with family dinners where it was like, Oh no, you're not leaving the table until you finish every single thing on your plate. And it was exactly. ingrained in her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to this day, I, she don't want anyone to waste, you know, she'll take it off your plate if you're not going to, you know, so it's, it's an interesting one and, and you don't want to waste food, but um, you know, I don't know. I, I actually would rather, you know, um, if someone gave me something that I thought was just like, cause like I look at sugar and things like that as poison. I've sort of trained my body where it's just like mm-hmm. this processed sugar is poison. So I'd rather throw it away. You know, it's like people are like, Oh, we'll give it away. I'm like, well, why, why would I give poison to someone else? Like, I'm just going to throw it away. Like, um, you know, but, uh, yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting thing where it's more of a mindset, uh, mm-hmm. of not wanting to waste. Yeah. I, the way I get around that is I'm just making sure most of my food, my dogs can eat. So then I don't there have you to go. throw it away. My dogs, can <laughs> have, <it's fine>. nice. <laughs> nice. my dogs are very spoiled They're <laughs> They eat very well, but yeah, it's like, that's easy enough, right? Like if my dogs can't eat it, then I probably shouldn't be eating it. I mean, like, honestly, that's a good one. Like, good one. yeah. <laughs> Well, Andy, this has been awesome. Um, before we wrap up, well, I do first, yeah, let me ask you, I guess, first, where people can learn more if they want to follow you, learn more from you. Um, where can they find you? So the best place to find me is going to be on Instagram. Um, I'm at bodies by bucko. Um, so just, you know, I'm on there. Uh, I post all the time about all at, these things. At bodies by bucko. That's with, that's B-U-C-K-O, right? Yes. Yep. And that's at Instagram. Um, and if anyone wants to DM me, I'll send them my tracking guide because I'm, I want more women to have it just because these apps are really wrong and I'm kind of freaked out by our government selling data and things. Um, Mm, so mm. I'll, to the listeners who want it, um, just, yeah, DM me peak performance and I'll send them their way. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. Any, anything that we should have covered um that we didn't do you think or do you think we did a good job i think we did it i think we're good all right well thank you so much this has been great uh i'm sure the ladies are going to appreciate uh that we did an episode you know for them and and uh uh not just for the guys um and learning some valuable information here so really really appreciate you uh coming on and joining us here today yeah i'm glad i brought something new I'm I'm yes. like shook that you haven't covered this before, but it's fine. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we did it today. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet tried any of our Peak Performance products, you get 20% off your first order. We have one of the largest selection of USDA certified organic superfood powders, as well as very high quality supplements. And you get 20% off your first order at buypeakperformance.com. That's www.buypeakperformance.com.